Immediate treatment is critical for sudden cardiac arrest victims since survival chances decrease by about 10% with every minute without defibrillation. Automated external defibrillator is designed especially for public access use to provide life-saving electroshock treatment of a patient having sudden cardiac arrest within the critical first few minutes until the professional care is available. It is a portable electronic device that automatically diagnoses the life-threatening cardiac arrhythmias of ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia in a patient and is able to treat them through defibrillation. Application of electrical therapy stops the arrhythmia, allows the heart to reestablish an effective rhythm. Automated external defibrillator can deliver an electrical shock to restart a collapsed heart. The automated external defibrillator can also deliver defibrillation treatment to victims of cardiac arrests who exhibit shockable ECG rhythms. The AED analyzes the heart rhythm and informs the rescuer if the rhythm is shockable or non-shockable. It also performs periodic self-tests to ensure its continual readings. An automated external defibrillator, or called AED, is a portable device that when used in conjunction with CPR can save lives. An AED is a device that is capable of automatically detecting a heart rhythm that requires a shock. The AED will charge itself and prompt the user to deliver a shock to the victim. AEDs also analyze the victim's heart rhythm several times to be certain it is a shockable rhythm. All AEDs are operated in more or less the same way. Note, AEDs are not for use on children under the age of one or victims that have a pulse. The AED will guide you through the entire process until help has arrived. First, confirm cardiac arrest. Check to see if the victim is unable to respond and there is no breathing. If you see someone collapse, immediately call the emergency number and get the paramedics en route. If there are other people around, choose someone specific and instruct them to call emergency number and explain the situation. This decreases confusion about who should do what and ensures that the call is being placed. Clear the area of flammable liquids and standing water. Click on the marker given to go through the step-by-step -step use of an AED. Turn on the AED. Follow the visual and voice prompts of the AED. This initiates text or voice prompts which guide the operator through subsequent steps. Attach the electrode pads to patient's bare chest. Prepare the chest by first ensuring to shave the chest where the pads are placed if the chest is hairy. Ensure that there are no medication patches on the chest. Then put the pads at least four fingers away from the pacemaker. Wipe away any water or sweat on the chest and check for any metal object. Sweep it away from the chest. For the placement of pad, place one pad at the right and the other pad on the left side. The AED should include a diagram typically on the adhesive pads themselves indicating where each pad goes. Always follow the instructions of the AED. Note, if there isn't good contact between electrode pad and skin, the device will emit an alert message to check them. CPR should not be interrupted while the adhesive electrode pads are being applied. Move aside clothing from chest wall. Move enough clothing to place pads. Expose only center of the chest. Before using an AED, remove metal necklaces and underwire bras. The metal may conduct electricity and cause burns. You can cut the center of the bra and pull it away from the skin. If the person has a lot of chest hair, you may have to trim it. AEDs usually come with a kit that includes scissors and or a razor. If the person is wearing a medication patch that's in the way, remove it and clean the medicine from the skin before applying the sticky pads. Check the person for implanted medical devices, such as a pacemaker or implantable cardioverter defibrillator. The outline of these devices is visible under the skin of the chest or abdomen, and the person may be wearing a medical alert bracelet. Also check for body piercings. 
move the defibrillator pad at least four fingers away from the implanted devices or piercings so the electric current can flow freely between the pads. Beware of water before performing defibrillation and make sure the patient's chest is completely dry and do not use alcohol to dry the patient's chest. Analyzing the victim's heart rhythm. The machine will analyze the heart rhythm and in less than 8 seconds determine whether a shock is needed. No one should touch the patient during the analysis. If the device indicates, stand clear and hit the shock button. If you get a no shock advised instruction from the AED, it can mean the victim that you thought was pulseless does indeed have a pulse, or the victim now has regained the pulse, or the victim is pulseless, but is not in a shockable rhythm. Delivering a shock to the victim. If the AED indicates that a shock is required, make sure that everyone is clear of the victim. Tell everyone assisting you to stay clear of the victim and ensure that you are clear of the victim as well. Then press the shock button on the AED machine to deliver the first shock. A fully automatic AED will shock the victim automatically. Immediately following the shock, begin two minutes of CPR as instructed by the AED. Performing CPR in cycles of 30 chest compressions to two breaths for two minutes or until the AED informs you to stop CPR. After shock, start or resume CPR until emergency medical help arrives or until the person begins to move. Performing CPR in cycles of 30 chest compressions to two breaths for two minutes or until the AED informs you to stop CPR. Stay with the person until medical help arrives and report all the information you know about what has happened. There are several safety or precautions you must use before using an AED on a patient. Do not use on a child below 8 years or 40 kilograms unless using pediatric or child electrode pads. Make sure the patient isn't lying on any kind of conductive surface, such as a sheet of metal or metal bleachers or water. Do not operate an AED if under the effects of alcohol or drugs. Do not touch a patient when shock therapy is being delivered. Be aware of your surroundings before performing resuscitation and make sure there isn't any kind of flammable supplies, such as gasoline, oxygen-enriched gaseous or fume environment. Be careful with cell phones or portable radios as the waves can cause problems. These devices need to be kept at least six feet away. Place one electrode pad on the victim's upper right chest and one on the lower left side under the victim's left breast. Do not place it over the breast. To apply pediatric pads, place the anterior pad on the center of the child's chest. Then place the posterior pad onto the center of the child's back. The AED will then begin to analyze and recommend the next steps. Automated external defibrillators are simple to use and easy to maintain. Failing to maintain your AED can lead to disaster on the day it is needed. Universally, all AEDs need the following to be operational when an emergency occurs. The AED should be checked that it is physically in the proper location. The AED pads should be checked. The package should be sealed until ready to be used, and it should be within its expiration date. If the pad package is open or the expiration date has passed, it should be replaced immediately. The battery should be checked. For most AEDs, there is an indicator light or symbol that indicates if the battery is okay or if it needs service. Know the battery check mechanism for your AED. If the battery is low, you should receive both visual and audible warnings that may generate a beep like a smoke detector with a low battery. Most AEDs have a small pouch or packet of supplies you might need when using the AED. This pouch may include a face mask for rescue breathing, a small towel, scissors, protective gloves, and a razor. Be sure this kit is ready for action. Manual contains valuable information specific to checking and maintaining your AED. Be sure to read and follow the instructions. 
AEDs are very reliable devices and problems are very rare, but they can happen. Your owner's manual is also a valuable resource for correcting problems with your AED. It is helpful to have a documented periodic check of the AED. The AED may have come with a checklist for a weekly or monthly check. If not, a sample check sheet is attached. Feel free to download and use to monitor the condition of your AED. Finally, an action plan can help your emergency run smoothly. If your organization has one, review and practice it periodically. First, this film will show you how to perform CPR and use an AED in real time. Afterwards, it will show you the techniques again with an explanation of each skill. Are you alright? Help! Can somebody help me please? How can I help you? Call for an ambulance and bring me an AED. Here's an AED. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Stand clear. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Stand clear. Deliver shock now. Stand clear. Press the orange button now. Shock delivered. Begin CPR. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Stand clear. No shock advised. Begin CPR.
Now that you have seen a demonstration of how to perform CPR and use an AED, we will go through the actions again. But this time, I will explain what you should do. First, look for danger. If there is no danger to you, the victim or bystanders, kneel beside the victim. Place the victim on his back, on a firm surface. Gently shake the victim's shoulders and ask, Are you alright? If the victim does not respond, shout for help. Open the airway by gently tilting the head and lifting the chin with two fingers. While holding the airway open, listen, look and feel for breathing for up to 10 seconds. If the victim is not breathing, or not breathing normally, ask a bystander to call the emergency number for an ambulance and to bring an AED immediately when available. If no bystander is available, make the call yourself. Use your mobile phone if possible. Then place one hand in the center of the chest. Put your other hand on top and interlock your fingers. Press the chest down 5 to 6 centimeters, whilst keeping your arms straight. Press 30 times at a rate of 100 to 120 a minute, up to twice a second. After 30 compressions, give two rescue breaths. To do this, use the fingers of the hand performing the head tilt to pinch his nose closed. Take a normal breath yourself and place your mouth over the mouth of the victim. Breathe out for about one second until the victim's chest rises as if taking a normal breath. Allow the air to come out, then give a second breath. Continue delivering 30 chest compressions and two rescue breaths until professional help takes over or the AED arrives. When the AED arrives, immediately switch it on and follow the voice prompts. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Remove the victim's clothes to expose their bare chest. Remove the pads from the package, looking carefully at the pictures shown on each pad. Peel off the first pad and place exactly as shown in the picture on the pad. Peel off the second pad and place exactly as shown in the picture on the pad. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. If needed, connect the pads connector to the AED. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Stand clear. When prompted by the AED, look to see that everyone is clear and call clear stand, clear. stand clear. When prompted by the AED, press the shock button. Deliver shock now. Stand clear. Press the orange button now. Shock delivered. Begin CPR. Start CPR again as soon as prompted by the AED. When prompted by the AED, stop CPR 
and look to see that everyone is clear. And call Stand Clear. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Stand clear. No shock advised. If needed, begin CPR. If the AED prompts, no shock advised, start CPR again as soon as prompted by the AED. Continuing until prompted by the AED. If circumstances allow for a second person to assist, then the skills should be split between the two rescuers. The first person should continue CPR until prompted to stop. Go on, I'll work around you. The second person should operate the AED following the voice prompts given. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Analyzing heart rhythm. Stay clear. Do not touch the patient. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Deliver Stay shock clear. now. Press the orange button now. Shock delivered. Go on. Begin the CPR. second person should direct the first person on when to stop and restart CPR. The second person should take over delivering CPR after two minutes to prevent fatigue. Both rescuers exchange roles every two minutes. In this section we have understood about automated external defibrillator. Automated external defibrillator is designated especially for public access use to provide life-saving electroshock treatment of a patient having sudden cardiac arrest within the critical first minute until the professional care is available. The AED can deliver, analyze, and perform periodic tests to confirm its continual readings. Going forward, we also understood how to use an AED in an emergency situation. The sequence procedure also guided us through the do's and don'ts to be followed when using the equipment on the victim. On an adult male, place one pad on the victim's upper right chest and the other on the victim's lower left side. On a child, place one pad in the middle of the chest and the other pad on the child's back. And in case of a female victim, place one electrode pad on the victim's upper right chest and one on the lower left side under the victim's left breast. Do not place it over the breast. Lastly, we also learned how to maintain the AED for future use.